Glory to Jesus Christ. So I'll take my mask off. I don't need it right now. <coughs> There's no one to catch my coughs here. <coughs> Online. We're reading the Catechism of the Catholic Church, published by Liberia Vaticana. This is the 2016 second edition. It's the 2019 reprint. And uh, we're at Roman numeral four in part one of section two. Uh, Paragraph six, man, and on creation, on creation, and uh, man, and Roman numeral four, man in paradise, man being human being. But of course, this is examining the uh, Genesis story in uh, Genesis chapter two. So let's pray. O oh, heavenly King, comfort a spirit of truth, who are everywhere present and filling all things, O treasure of blessings and giver of life, come dwell within us and cleanse our souls, O gracious Lord. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal, one have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal, one have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal, one have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Uh, this is page 95. And you can also get this online for www.usccb.org and uh, also www.vatican.va and, you know, put in all the catechism of the Catholic Church and stuff like that. Also, from Catholic Culture, you can get a free download, a free e-book e uh, of the catechism of the Catholic Church. So this is 374. The first man was not only created good, but was also established in friendship with his creator and in harmony with himself and with the creation around him in a state that would be surpassed only by the glory of the new creation in Christ. That was the plan. But unfortunately, as history shows us, that was not how it works out at this present moment. But because Christ, God, has intervened by the Incarnation, it's going to work out. We will be restored not just to the uh, paradisical, uh, but to uh, but to the, the heavenly, if we cooperate with grace, of course. So uh, we, our purpose is friendship with God, is, is total communion with God. That's the purpose of creation. That's the purpose of the universe. It's to lead us to that. And, you know, there are other purposes, of course, but that's the main purpose. It's, it's communion with God. And in God, communion with each other, with all rational creatures who are in grace. So, um, and so 375 says, and so the glory... Our glory is this new creation, which we can begin to experience by the power of grace already. Now, we're not immortal in our bodies, definitely not. The older I get, the more my body says, you are definitely not immortal. And um, the creaking knees and all this other stuff. Um, the body is not immortal. My soul is immortal. Your soul is immortal. And our bodies will be immortal in the resurrection of the resurrection of the body in the last day. The church interpreting the symbol, this is 375, still on page 95. The church interpreting the symbolism of biblical language in an authentic way, in the light of the New Testament and tradition. Remember, scripture in tradition, that is, it's, it's, tradition here doesn't mean customs and stuff like that, although the customs can be the envelope of the tradition with a capital T, the small t traditions. This is hey paradosis. Hey, apostolic, the, <coughs> the apostolic handing down. 
the oral tradition, the oral teachings of Christ, and the uh, oral teachings of the Holy Spirit through the apostles, and through the church, the unfolding through the church of the tradition. The uh, revelation ended with the last apostle or with the last author of, of the New Testament, inspired author of the New Testament. <coughs> Whichever, because remember, not all <coughs> the authors of the New Testament were apostles. Uh, that is to say, one of the twelve, uh, Hoi Dodica. St. Paul wasn't. St. Paul is rightly called an apostle and is you know, often uh, listed with them in iconography, you know, when they have this, the, the apostles is often 13 with St. Paul. And because uh, apostle means one sent on a mission, and he's not, he's not one of the twelve, and uh, uh, he's the most prolific author in the New Testament, and he's not an apostle, but let us say one of the twelve. Uh, and uh, Luke isn't. Luke isn't. Luke is is, is second generation. <coughs> Yeah, an associate of St. Paul. So, um, there's that. So, uh, and of course, there's the whole, what they call, uh, the, uh, the Tradition ist Geschichte in German, the, of the, of the, uh, the study and analysis of the traditions right, in, in Scripture, coming out through Scripture. And, uh, and uh, also the you know what forms are used, what literary genres, what also uh, the use of archaeology and history and linguistics in analyzing scripture. But in the end, it always has to be as a Christian that a scripture is the inspired word of God, and that and as a Catholic, it's scripture in the apostolic tradition as it unfolds. Uh, Revelation has ended, as I said, with the last apostle, the last author of the New Testament, human author of the last de New Testament, and <coughs> <coughs> there's no ongoing revelation. That's Mormonism. Uh, that's, that's Gnosticism, I suppose, as you could say, too. Um, but there's the unfolding. There's a doctrinal development with the uh, different questions, different things that come up. And it's it actually, usually, so we approach scripture, but for most, uh, but scripture is written in stone. It is, it is as it is. Uh, but uh, tradition is, uh, which doesn't mean that scripture isn't living. It is, scripture is living. But uh, the tradition uh, can answer the questions often better than the scripture can. Because uh, 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 you can have a, a, a Bible alone approach as long as it is scripture rightly interpreted, and it won't be rightly interpreted if it's separated from apostolic tradition. And who is the authoritative interpreter of scripture? The church. So uh, I'm not, you're not, uh, individuals aren't. It's the church that is. So, uh, but the church is the servant of scripture, not the master of scripture. The church is the servant of apostolic tradition, not the master of it. So we, the teacher. So church, uh, ecclesia mater et magistra. The church is our, is mother and teacher. So, uh, and uh, so, Let's go on. The church interpreting the symbolism of biblical language in an authentic way. Because remember, the Bible is not a book of biology or geology or uh, astrophysics or whatever, of the physical sciences. The, the Bible is the love letters of God to us. <coughs> it is uh, inerrant spiritually and doctrinally and rightly interpreted and infallible, rightly interpreted. Um, 
again, in the context of scripture and tradition of the church. So, uh, in the light of the New Testament and tradition, teaches, do we always read the Old Testament in the light of the New Testament and tradition, and especially the two pillars of scripture interpretation, God is love from 1 John, and Jesus is Lord from 1 Corinthians. So, uh, teaches that our first parents, Adam and Eve, whatever they were called, uh, they called each other, uh, were constituted in an original state of holiness and justice. This grace of original holiness was to share in divine life. But was, was this a, a mature situation? Um, is it St. Irenaeus that seems to imply that uh, they were in uh, the sort of the beginning phase, they were in the innocence phase of this uh, state of holiness and justice because they were sharing in divine life. Just as, you know, with, so, uh, you know, this, be, before the original sin of, of the first humans was committed, that a disease that affects us, that uh, moral, morally and spiritually genetic, quote unquote, disease that's best done. Of course, then there's also ancestral sin and societal sin that influences us uh, in the, the very social air we breathe and all that. So you, it depends on how you're raised and all this stuff. So, but God's grace is stronger than anything. So uh, this state grace of original holiness was to share in divine life. So this is restored in baptism. This is restored through the saving incarnation, death, and resurrection of Christ. By the radio, of course, is it, is it complete? Is it matured? No. Uh, my body will tell you, oh, definitely not complete yet. By the radiance, this is 376, by the radiance of this grace, all dimensions of man's life were confirmed. As long as he remained in the divine intimacy, so as long as we're in that state of grace, man would not have to suffer or die, at least spiritual death, at least. Uh, see, what's the reference? 252. See Genesis 217, 316, uh, and uh, 19. 319. <coughs> <coughs> but this is primarily talking about spiritual life and death, uh, not physical. Uh, although we're, we're, the first human beings were a true composite. They were true, they were, uh, body, soul, and spirit were in total communication. But that definitely ain't the state we are in now. So, uh, and finally, the, wait a minute, it was, the inner harmony of the human person, the harmony between man and woman, which it should be again, but, 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 but there's been suppression, there's been uh, antagonism, repression, you know, uh, men putting down women, all this stuff and stuff like that. And then uh, vice versa, there's vice versa also, uh, especially currently. Um, that's, that's a state of sinfulness. They say racism, all the classism, all of this stuff. They weren't, uh, uh, you know, it was the first people, and, the, and even the first societies, it wasn't uh, like that, but uh, with all this stuff. But anyway, uh, but we have this this inclination. And, and it, it in, in the effect of ritual sin affects all of creation. You know, look at how animals interact and stuff like that. The uh, predatory nature. You know, there were those who argued that carnivorism is a result of the fall. Uh, that they, before, you know, in this, you we were supposed to eat plants and stuff like that, be vegetarians. I know they probably drink milk and eat eggs too, when fertilized. But uh, <coughs> but that's all speculation, right? Because we are living 
in a state that that isn't so. Not that, there were those who tried to say that carnivorism is sinful, it isn't. Uh, it may not be good for you, if uh, physically, you know, clogging your, your arteries and stuff like that, but it is not, is not per se sinful. And uh, finally, the harmony between the first couple and all creation comprised the state called original justice. So the, the, rather than uh, exploiting nature and, and destructive, rather than uh, animals attacking us and we're attacking them, and uh, animals eating us and we're eating them, it was supposed to be this, this uh, true harmony, which isn't the way it is, is it now? Though 96, 377, the mastery over the world that God offered men, and mastery is put in quotes because it's stewardship is what we're, we're called. We have a duty toward uh, the rest of creation. And so as, as someone once said, we do not so much inherit uh, the earth from our ancestors, but hold it in in uh, hold it for our our descendants for that so uh <coughs> we're not supposed to give a ruined earth to our our children but did we the mastery over the world that god offered man from the beginning was realized above all when man himself with within man himself so we, there was a mastery over ourselves which isn't the way it is you know the <coughs> we're not we're not masters over ourselves. You know, I can tell my knees to do all sorts of things and they're just going to laugh at me at this point. <coughs> and even, you know, the, that, as St. Paul said, that which I would do, I do not do. That which I would not do, I do. That whole effect of, of the reality of original sin. It's, as G.K. Chesterton said, uh, one can pro uh, the original sin is the one doctrine that one can prove by looking in the mirror but just looking at ourselves uh, and, and looking at other people. So, uh, or even looking at babies and stuff like that. If you put a toy in between two babies, do they cooperate with that and blah, blah, blah? No, they, they start screaming that one has the other. And the, the, so that's, uh, we're called to cooperation, but there's that, <coughs> that rivalry, the competitiveness can be, there can be a, a good uh, good aspects competitiveness uh but not when it uh not with not the rivalry that produces envy and greed and 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 rage and hatred and all this stuff so uh <coughs> and uh putting other people down and stuff and uh, arrogance and that, that that's not godly mastery of self so as uh Aristotle was supposed to have told uh, Alexander the Great, Aristotle was a tutor of Alexander the Great, that he said, well, I have, do I have no more worlds to conquer? He's saying all this stuff, but uh, this is a legend. Uh, and uh, Aristotle said, oh, you have the inner world of yourself to conquer. If you are not master of yourself, you are master of nothing. <coughs> The whole reality of discipline and the like, which when it came to drinking and stuff like that, Alexander wasn't into. The first man was unimpaired and ordered in his whole being because he was free from the triple concupiscence. See 1 John 2.13 and 2.8. That subjugates him to the pleasures of the senses covetousness for earthly goods, and self-assertion. <clears throat> no, self-assertion isn't bad. It's uh, aggressiveness that comes out of it, the, that I have to use others as a, a ladder to, to, to success, that I have to exploit other people, that I have to put other people down. That is ungodly. And pleasure of the senses, that's nice. That's what the senses were made for. Uh, but uh, uh, but to exalt that, to make that uh, the the goal, the goal of life, 
uh, amusement is the goal of life. Uh, uh, just pleasure is a goal of life. But usually uh, that ends up exploiting people because uh, the others have to be uh, my servants at best and more likely my slaves for that or all this sort of stuff. And so, uh, and of course, you know, addiction to, to <coughs> partial things, you know, addiction to alcohol, drugs, all this stuff, gambling, but all these other things. <coughs> Making money, which is not bad in itself, it depends on what you use the money for and how you made the money, how you received the money. Um, all that stuff. So this is contrary to the dictates of reason. So natural law, this is what reason is. Reason isn't just, you know, how I can rationalize doing this or that or the other thing. Uh, no, it's, you know, do to others as I would do to them uh, and the like. But natural law, this, you know, is this in accord with my purpose of being this action or inaction? So, uh, 378. The sign of man's familiarity with God is that God places him in the garden. So that's the symbol, the paradise, which is a... Uh, an enclosed <coughs> garden or even uh, park, shall we say, from the, the Persian, the old Persian. <coughs> there he lives to till and keep it. So he's called to be a gardener. So it's not supposed to be something you know, backbreaking uh, work that deprives him of of everything. No, it's supposed to be a gardener and all this stuff. So, uh, work is not yet a burden, which it will become. So, in the, uh, the, so, see, so Genesis 2, 15, and Genesis 3, 17 through 19. But rather, the collaboration of man and woman with each other, with God, and uh, with nature. In that in perfecting the visible creation. Three seventy nine. The entire harmony of original justice, foreseen for man in God's plan, will be lost by the sin of our first parents. So the rebellion, which is that it's, uh, which the picking of the fruit from the tree uh, symbolizes. In brief, three eighty. Father most holy. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the creator, the, the trinity, that is, the father alone is not the creator, uh, the trinity, he might have dominion over all creatures from the Roman Missal Eucharistic Prayer 4, uh, verse 117. Man is predestined to reproduce the image of God's son made man. the image of the invisible God, Colossians 1, 15, so that Christ shall be the firstborn of a multitude of brothers and sisters, Ephesians 1, 3 through 6, and Romans 8, 29. Man, though made of body and soul, is a unity, from Gaudium et Spes, 14, 1. <coughs> We're called to be this harmony, which we're not, to say, start coughing. <coughs> you know, body, soul, spirit, harmony. With the dominance of the intellect, rightly informed intellect, of course, and with the will and all this stuff, and the emotions following, and the, the body following, obeying. But that's, that just ain't the way it is, is it, now? So, uh, but in the resurrection, oh yes, if we, are resurrected in the state of grace, in the fullness of grace. God did not create man a solitary being. From the beginning, male and female, he created them. So to be the, there's a the fellowship of male and female, the fellowship of everybody. It was supposed to be in Genesis 1.27. This partnership of man and woman constitutes the first form of communion between persons. Gaudium et spes 12.4. 
Revelation makes known to us the state of original holiness and justice of man and woman before sin. From their friendship with God flowed the happiness of their existence in paradise. Oh, Ella Butler's watching. Give a wave there. Let's push the finish button. Oh, did I say the Our Father? No, I don't think I did. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil, amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's push the finish button.